Hi everybody, my name is Alex Draycott, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about texturing height fields in uh, Kunini 16.5. Um, this will be taking around a half an hour, and by the end of it hopefully we'll get something that looks kind of like this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by building a really simple terrain, and then I'm going to cover generating different textures based on your masks in a COP network, and then how to bring those back onto your terrain, and a couple of the different techniques that I use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start and switch over into a blank terrain file. Um, the first thing we want to do is plop down a height field. So generate that super quick. Move that down. Uh, and the height field is going to generate a nice little SOP graph for us with the height field node in it, uh, where we can control grid spacing, which is our resolution. Um, so really quickly, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because this is going to be a focus on texturing. Um, I'm going to uh, oops, not that noise. I'm going to place in a uh, height field noise um, just to give us some variation. And then I'm actually going to take advantage of, of Houdini and I'm going to do something a little different, which is I'm going to scatter some geometry around the surface of this to get some more interesting detail in a way that really you can't do in other terrain generating programs. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and generate a sphere. Um, Put that down, it's going to be pretty small, make it a little bigger, make a geometry. Uh, and there's a node that you can use called the height field scatter. Uh, and a height field scatter is going to place a bunch of points all over your terrain. By default, it's doing it based on a mask, which I don't actually have. So we'll just, uh, we could do it based on the height. Or if we just clear this field, it's going to just distribute it evenly. And we're going to drop the max points down to 25. Um, and then what we're going to use is the copy stamp node um, to uh, distribute these spheres uh, all over the terrain, which is which is just ridiculously cool that we can do that. Um, what we what we'll end up doing is we'll actually end up using the uh, height field project, and the height field project is going to let us uh, project geometry down. Um, oops, uh, onto uh, onto the uh, onto the terrain. Um, oh, that's because I'm feeding in the scatter. So you want to make sure to feed in the uh, noise itself, and then actually put in the right order: geometry on the right, terrain on the left. There we go, and you can actually see it's going in and and projecting those onto the terrain. So we're gonna do a couple things really quickly. Oop. Not not that. Uh, we're going to go in and we're going to tessellate our sphere a little bit, um, give it some extra geometry. And then in the uh, stamp section of the copy stamp node, we're going to stamp inputs onto each one of these. And this is going to let us modify the, the, basic, uh, the basic parameter of, of each sphere a little bit. Um, so if I go ahead and place a transform node, we can reference that stamped parameter. Um, in this case, I'm randomizing uh, the, uh, just a single floating point, and we're going to use that to change the size. Uh, and to do that, it's uh, type in stamp, and then you want to three parameters. The first one is referencing the copy node, um, and, and that, and then we want to reference the name of the parameter from the uh, copy node, and then finally a default value. Uh, and you can see immediately we're getting a, a bit of a random scale. I'm going to go ahead um, and actually add just a little bit of a value onto that, just point 0.2 so that it's not 100% random. Uh, we'll just random it all um, or apply it to every single area so that it's uniform. And now if I go back, I can uh, kind, of, kind of control the, the size distribution. Uh, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put a transform node down under the copy node um, just so that we can offset it uh, a little and create some some interesting little domes. Uh, and if you want to go in and, and even make it uh, more interesting, you could plop in a mountain node um, where here we can go in and, and play with some noise and make that height 25 and... Uh, like this, uh, 25, 
Kind of drop the roughness down a little. We don't we don't actually have our, our sphere tessellated that much. So if I, I were to update that and go back down to the mountain node. Um uh, kind of start to get some some interesting noise. And that's gonna make it look like we've got these giant weird rocky boulders all over our terrain. Um I'll turn off my grid really quickly. But this is cool because it's just another way for us to start influencing our terrain. Um, we could grab this uh, as a mask later and, and use that if we wanted to. But for the time being, what we're going to want to do is we're going to plop down an erode. Um, and the erode in, uh, in Houdini is going to be a simulation that actually runs over time. So if I drag my time slider along and I let it think about it a little, it's actually going to do that work uh, more every frame. Um, it's also going to generate a bunch of different masks, and masks are really important for the texturing process. Um, it's going to create stuff like where the water is and where the deposits were. It's also going to create a little visualization, which by default is just set to this range, but you can compute the range based on your height map. And it gives you something um, uh, quite a bit nicer. So for the time being, we're probably just going to set this to uh, somewhere around here, and I'm actually going to turn off the visualize and then just lock this node so that I can move my time slider back and forth if I ever needed to. But you can see it started to create some interesting shapes. Uh, now, the resolution that I picked by default, uh, and I left it pretty close to default, so 460 by 460 more or less, which actually isn't that much. So there is another node that we can use, which is a height field resample, and that's gonna let us up the resolution um, by varying factors. So if I were to now up the resolution scale by almost three and look at it again. I've got closer to, uh, you know, uh, 12 or 1.2K or 1.3K. Um, upping and changing the resolution will change how certain nodes behave. Um, for example, the height field erode node tends to, uh, tends to change its, its detail a little bit based on that extra additional information. Um, but this is a really good scenario for potentially using the take system. And if you're not familiar with the take system, uh, Houdini essentially lets you run in uh, a variety of different passes, um, and you can link values to those passes. So I can go to my take list, and I'm going to rename this final. Um, so I could then go back, and you, you switch between the takes up here. Um, and you can also add those takes from here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the final take, go back to my height field resample, and then if I hold right click, I can include this value and take and set that resolution to actually be really, really high. So if it was time to do the final terrain render, I could up it here. And then if I go back to my main take, it just jumps back down. Um, and that stays consistent as you work down through your terrain. So just a, a small thing in case you weren't aware. Um, but we're going to stick right now with just the take that I had. We're going to keep it to eh, around 2.5 the resolution, get that kind of close to 1K. Uh, just because we want to keep working, um, and now I'm gonna, uh, and now I'm gonna work with uh, some distorting. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna plop down a height field visualize, um, just so that we can we can look a little bit at the masks. Um, I turn it back on in the erode, but the erode's been locked, and I want to just keep it that way. So I can compute the range, and actually you can see here if I if I color you know something vibrant, something like red or, or blue, we can plug in different uh, masks into, um, uh, into uh, or different uh, layers into, into this visualize. So I can visualize the bedrock, um, which is very close to the height. I can visualize the flow. I can visualize the, the water deposits, and I can visualize the debris. Um, and and this will be important in just a sec. But for the time being, uh, let's talk about uh, distorting. Um, distortion is a uh, another really really fun node that can work off of a mask for adding nice high fidelity to your terrain. Um, it works with different noise types. You can play with simplex or uh, curl noise. It can run off of a mask and it can do some pretty crazy things. Um, it can add some pretty interesting patterns. You can see pretty quickly I've gotten some cool stuff. Uh, just by slowly bending and tweaking. Now, here's the problem, is that a distort uh, gets applied to a layer, 
I, right now it is just applying to the height layer. So if I were to look at my water mask, which I believe this is, no, this is debris, so let's look at water. The water did not distort with the, uh, uh, with the height field um, together. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're actually going to want to have a duplicate of this distort. Um, and up here at the top, we're just going to change that to water. Um, and we're going to actually do this for every single uh, layer that we wanted to keep. Um, and it's, it's important to know what happens as you pass the layer information down. You have to keep track of it because in the end, uh, assuming that, or it's important to keep track of assuming you want to use it for the texturing process, output it as some kind of mask or something like that. Not necessarily a requirement, um, uh, but if it is, it's something to track. So we've got water, let's make this uh, debris, and then we'll do one more, we'll just call this flow. Um, so now we need to combine this, and, and the way to do that is with the height field layer node. Um, and the height field layer node is your, your, your general blend node. Um, you have input one, input two, and a mask. So um, let me go ahead and, and we'll, we'll stay stuck on the visualize. Um, right here, it's replacing every layer from the second one, um, but we're going to just want to replace the water. So now you can see the water is distorted in the exact same way uh, as the uh, height field was. Uh, or the height layer was, I should say. Oh, height field. Um, and we're going to actually do this a couple times. Um, that everything is recombined. And you could theoretically parameterize all of this and you could make it, uh, you could even make a little tool or a little uh, subgraph that would do all this for you. Um, but for now, I wanted to keep it exposed so you guys could kind of see what's going on. Um, height field, uh, this one is debris. So we want to combine that there. Uh, and then we'll duplicate it one last time and we'll plug in the low and now if we were to go in um, go back to our visualize node and if we were looking at our debris or if we were looking at our flow map we could see that all that information is still accurate um, and now if you know convenience you just wanted to go in and edit all of these together you could we wanted to tweak that but we'll, we'll kind of keep that how it is because we want to get moving on to the texturing um, I'm going to disconnect this uh, visualizer really quickly. Um, and I'm going to talk about another way to get uh, organic uh, features and um, uh, visuals for your terrain, and that's the slump node. And unlike the erode node, which runs over the timeline, the slump node is just going to kind of do it all at once. Um, and the slump node takes a lot of the sediment and it redistributes it out over the terrain. Um, uh, it also likes to run off of a mask. So by default, it's actually not going to do that much. But if we plop in a height field uh, mask by feature, which is the go-to uh, masking node, you can see it's going to give us, uh, we can do mask by slope, mask by height, stuff like that. So go in, I'm going gonna, gonna to go in a mask by height just to start, compute range, pull, pull that in, create a bit of a soft fall off here. So I want to, I want to, I want this to apply more to the bottom of the map than the top. Um, and then if I were to plug that in, you can kind of see. I'll, I'll hook up a mask clear really quickly. You can kind of see that redistribution of of sediment. Um, and if you select the slump node, you can actually change the spread rate. You can change the number of iterations it's running. You can kind of see it. Let's zoom in really quickly here. You can kind of see as I change it, um, as it's got more distribution, it's going to leave more of the rock exposed and kind of flatten everything out. Um, uh, but you can see why I like it, which is that it's giving us that cool grass on rock look um, or snow on rock, depending on uh, the kind of project you had in mind. It's also going to output a mask of that, which um, could be potentially really important. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll clear it out, but we may grab that information later. Um, for the time being, though, uh, let's talk texturing. So the the basic way to apply well, we'll keep that clear in there. But 
okay. Uh, the basic, uh, we may go back to that. The basic way to um, look at materials on your height field in the viewport is the quick shade. Um, and the quick shade is going to let you plug in different textures based on different, um, uh, based on different masks. So I could plug in uh, a layer like the debris and put in a texture and have it tile a bunch and stuff like that. But we're actually going to use it to preview textures that we're generating real time. So the only thing we're really going to concern ourselves with is this base texture area. Um, so, uh, we're going to do our textures, um, and actually, on the on the side note here, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to create an output from this. Make a, a null node. Call the we'll make it green. Practice. We'll call this out terrain. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also going to plop down a cop network, which is the image processing part of of Houdini. And you can we can pop over to the render view or the sorry the compositing view, and we could take a look at things. But the the very first thing we need to do is we need to get, um, oops, we need to get a uh, a texture from this cop network onto this texture or uh, sorry onto this terrain. Um, so I'm going to dive in here and I'm just going to generate some noise. Um, and we can, we can switch over to that composite view. Look, it's our beautiful colorful noise. And I'm gonna make another null. We'll call this uh, out, oops, uh, out uh, underscore color. So to link this up, we have to type in a reference by hand. So I'm gonna go back to the quick shade. Uh, and then here under map name, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type tilde operate one. Um, and then we're just going to reference the object right field one slash uh, cup two net one slash uh, out color. And just like that, we have uh, we have our um, we have our uh, our color reference directly onto the texture. Um, and and this is this is an important part. I've had people ask me about this before. So just one more time, we are directly in the base texture map name, referencing the output node of this cop network, um, rather than loading a texture file um, from the disk, which you could also do. Because if I could, I could go in here and, and browse for something like that. Um, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, terrain does not look like uh, like a bunch of melted candy. So we're going to want to get information from that SOP uh, network into, uh, into our compositing view. And actually, there is a node for that, which is the SOP uh, import node. So if I type that down, I can now browse to the output of the terrain. Um, when we look at that, we can immediately see um, some information coming through. It doesn't look very correct. Um, uh, and there's a couple things we want to do to set this up correctly. The first is we want to set this, the resolution um, from the SOP network. Uh, and this is going to now set the resolution of this uh, image to 1139, which is what we had before. We're also going to want to set planes because uh, the compositing uh, setup works on image planes. And we can see all the different planes now populate here. And we'll be bouncing back and forth between these. Um, uh, quite a bit. So uh, to look at the water, the debris, the flow. Um, they even still have that uh, mask from the slump node, which is super cool. Um, yeah, so the the last thing we want to do is we want to remap everything to 0 to 1. Um, and that's great because that lets us work with consistent stuff for ramping and creating gradient textures and that kind of thing. Um, uh, but yeah, so let's make some let's make some textures. When when it comes to uh, generating uh, terrain textures, we're gonna probably focus on just the diffuse for this uh, for this setup. Um, uh, a really common technique that you can see in, in Warp Machine and other uh, other programs is to use gradient mapping. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and create a uh, uh, a VOMP cop to filter node, um, and this is gonna let us customize uh, a little chunk of code that can run over our image. Um, 
And uh, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to have some kind of input, which is going to be the alpha. We're going to want to put in a ramp parameter. Um, and a ramp parameter is uh, the, the, you know, the kind of gradient mapping that we're used to. Um, and then really quickly on the ramp out, we're going to want to go uh, vector to float. Um, and plug these into red, green, and blue. Um, so now if we were to plug in an alpha into our, uh, call this our gradient mapping node, um, call this I don't know, uh, rock, let's say let's make our, our rock texture. Um, uh, but unfortunately everything here is in a bunch of different channels. Um, uh, fortunately, there is a, a node to move channel information from one to another, and that's the channel copy. Um, so we'll call this uh, um, no, what should we call this? Uh, call this uh, slump mask. Um, and actually, if, let's work on the let's work on the grass. So uh, in this node, we can say, hey, we want to be making a new plane. We want to make it an alpha plane. And the source, we want the mask that we had before. So plug this in. And now if we look over at the color output, we are seeing a black and white uh, uh, image of what we were making. I'm going to go ahead and make, make something that kind of looks like grass. Uh, or give the 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 low quality. This will be a, a quick demo, so we're not going to go super crazy on this. But you know, just some some variation in here, um, kind of create some interesting uh, interesting patterns. Uh, maybe be a little bit of uh, orange or something. Uh, yeah, it's looking kind of fun. Um, and if we were to take this color now, plug this into our out color, go back to our scene view, we can actually see that information showing up here. I actually don't like the orange. And what's cool is I can now just edit this here and look at the output in the, the window and update that. So uh, that is our, our very basic, how do we get some information all the way through here? So I'm going to go ahead and delete that noise. Um, and at this point, really, it's 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 just about uh, the the terrain pipelines that you may be used to. So, I've got this um, this slump mask, uh, and actually, a quick tip is it's still showing the height channel here. I can go in here and actually show the alpha channel, so we can now see that the slump mask looks like the slump mask. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and combine this with some noise. We'll Pull the noise off from this just so that uh, um, we're generating noise in the alpha channel. Um, and I want to blend these together because I want I want some noise to have some influence on top of this. Uh, for the blend, um, uh, merge all planes, alpha and alpha. Oops. Being a little weird. Um, placing the alpha channel, and then here, um, you can see we've, we're slowly adding in, um, some, some interesting noise there. So let's go back to our compositing view, um, and look at the noise itself, uh, and, and get some, get some more interesting stuff, the alpha channel. Um, you can really pull up the roughness a little, um, and add some some turbulence. Now we're getting some cool hyper detail, which we can now blend on top of the slump mask that we had before. Um, and as a result, uh, get a more interesting color output. Um, if I select the blend node and kind of see what, uh, how much of each one we want to pull in, we're getting some nice interesting little noise there. And again, we could be working back on our terrain. Um, but I think this is looking pretty cool. Uh, so let's bring in some other uh, additional layers really quickly. 
Uh, the big one that we want to do is we want to blend between where the slump mask is and everything else to make rock. So uh, I'm actually going to duplicate this over. We'll call this one um, gradient mapping rock. Uh, I'm going to kill most of that really quickly um, and make uh, something like a desaturated, darker, orangish um, rock color. Uh, and this is still, we're using the gradient mapping, so we're we're looking at the noise. Hop back over here to the, uh, to this. Uh, there we go. And plop in much darker value. Um, and we'll, we'll just generate a different noise just to keep things different. Um, we'll maybe switch to... Um, Something like that, maybe not as rough, some, some softer, some softer noise in there. And then we're going to want to blend these two together. Um, um, and we're actually going to want to blend, blend based off of our slump mask, because our slump mask kind of had that initial information. Um, but you can kind of see it's, it's doing a, uh, it's doing the work, but it's still, it's still pretty low contrast um, and the fact that this is image processing means we can go in and put in uh, a nice levels node um, to really pull up the contrast um, we'll have to go over to the uh, the alpha alpha tab on that uh, go look at compositing view uh, there we go so make that nice and nice and high contrast which then in turn is going to create uh, uh, a blend we also have to tell it what to blend off of we're blending off of alpha um, and uh, yeah now if we go back to our scene view you can see that I got the values backwards um, <laughs> I'm gonna swap that really quickly we start to see now our rocks are starting to look like rocks and our grass is staying like grass. Uh, at this point, we could really do um, whatever we wanted. We could output this. Uh, we could render that image down um, with a rock file output. Uh, we could start working on getting these into splat maps and outputting that on the terrain. Um, we could start setting up for an actual render. We could go in and plop down a skylight. I wanted to start getting things to look a little bit uh, more lively um, and the nice thing is all of this is just set up so that we can we can go back to you know the slump for example if we wanted to um, drop those iterations the textures will just update for us and that is really really cool um, to have that information to have that kind of control um, you know if I wanted to pull up the slump node into those rocks I could do that quickly and get that to a nice height range um, anyway that's uh, about it for this recording um, feel free to reach out to me, uh, uh, I think my, my website is, uh, www.digitaldracot.com, I'm just Alex Dracot at Digital Dracot, um, I'm happy to, to answer any questions if I can, um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully this gave a little bit of a glimpse into some of that texturing, uh, into some of that texturing process. Um, normally I'd ask for questions, but, uh, yeah, feel free to, to hit me up. Thanks.